It's the Market Sniper and we're back on gold. We were recently with Tom Brodovic of Palisade Radio saying there's a setup that's coming that I can see breaking in uh, maybe in the next week, uh, possibly even uh, tail end of this week. And I'm not sure when he's going to release that. Uh, it might have already gone out. I must go check it out. But anyway, that break has now occurred according to us. This is an impulsive move and this is the beginning of a breakout on gold. So you may recall we had the news events that were going against gold that led to those sell-offs. When we saw there was no further continuation and that's all we could hold below the 2K, it points to the underlying uh, strength of the gold market. Um, and despite that, we've had a couple of people coming out of the Fed, various branches of the Fed saying rates will remain uh, static for a lot longer, cuts aren't going to come near as fast or any as far, we're not in any rush to change interest rate policy, which should actually work against gold and now we actually have a triggering event to the upside, which goes to show our original thesis is that gold is not an interest rate play, it's a capital preservation play. It's a capital preservation play. Um, because in an environment where the interest rates go down or the expectations of when those things will go down and by how much should drive gold up. Um, if they're not going down and they're going to stay flat for longer and etc, 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 that should actually work against gold. However, in spite of this declaration, gold has chosen to go up quite impulsively. This is our upside HVF draw. So what happened? Some of you might remember that during the news views, we took a tactical short there. We actually closed it with small profit when it started to reverse back up the 20K because we were in short. It's totally tactical and glad to, and we, we discussed this possibility for quite a while in the community. It grew bigger and bigger. So what actually happened? You may recall this rejection was super violent. And what tends to happen when you get a very violent rejection, we expected a deeper dive. It didn't come, but you still work out that intense volatility that was particularly here across the wick. Because as I've highlighted before, that was around $150 of movement that you got. But uh, once it followed through a bit, it started to grind and then it just stopped. It wouldn't go much lower. But to shake out that intense slap in the face that it got, uh, without falling all the way to the ground, it did stand at the bar for a while, shaking its head. And that's what gives us the equivalence of this bloated second impulse that we see. Up, down, it had a good rally, first of all, quite sharp here, by the way. Then churn, 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 good rally. Then a little bit of softness in the middle. Then that final capitulation on that. Everything is awesome, Fed economic news. Can you believe that? The world, you've never had it so good. In fact, the billionaires have never been so rich. They've never dumped so many billions on insider sales. The Walton family, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, Bezos, the list goes on. Buffett, the list goes on. The biggest uh, dumpage into the stock market you've ever seen of insiders. Actually, it's worth a point, a case in point. Let's just see if I have that uh, scale somewhere on here. Uh, let's just bring it up, Bob and go here. I want to show you that particular chart that was going to highlight um, the amount of equities that are being dumped. There we go. Corporate Insider, Game of Trades uh, put it together. Uh, so shout out to him. It's also from Thomson Reuters, etc. Typically, you're a buyer. So insiders hold on net distributors of equity. So there should always be a little bit more. Remember, it's not number of people, it's number of shares. They have immense amounts of shares. So typically, they are net distributors, even when it's a buy time. So they're doing very moderate distribution of their shares when the ratio is 12 to 1. Um, in other words, they're selling 12 to every retail guy buying one, uh, typically like this, boom, 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 boom. When they are, it's, it's a bearish moment when that jumps to 21. These were all key moments where it was a good time to sell. This is where you are now on equities. This is where you are now on equities. 150, so I added these uh, scaling here just to make it a little bit more clear. But this, this is huge, huge dumpage, huge dumpage of um, equities. However, the S&P is not particularly volatile right now, and I'm not immediately calling a top. I think they get a little window of space between them and the actual top before we get the spiller, the absolute thriller, all the way from, you guessed it, Manila. But in the meantime, 
Where do you go? Where does all that money that Bezos and them go? They've got all the yachts, they've got all the whatevers uh, that they want, that they can play with. They've got all the little blackmail rings with cameraed up rooms and everything that they need to do the Mossad's work. What do they do now? What do they do about their wealth? Well, bond market is awful. It's the end of the debt market. Too much of it, much more of it going to come along down the pipe. You don't want to buy the bond market. Stock market, you're busy exiting, along with all your mates who are exiting too, by the way, that are all part of a Zio cartel, um, if you, in case you hadn't noticed. Um, so they're all exiting, so you're not getting into the stock market. So what do you do? Do you trust banks and leave all your dollars in the banks? I don't think so. They've seen all the action on the banks getting bailouts, the smaller banks and the dodgy uh, Fed statements around solv uh, solvency. So what do you actually do? You buy preservation of capital. In preservation of capital times, you buy the product that is preservation of capital. You are not concerned about the yield on your return. Otherwise, you'd buy a bond and earn 4%. Gold won't pay you 4% on seeing it in the bond markets at all. There isn't that demand. In fact, nation states, governments and pension funds are all in a bit of a fix, stuffed to the gills with bonds and not able to sell them. There's not enough depth in the bid stack. So much so that places like Japan and the UK and its pension crisis all had to come in. So you sit there in the room and say, wow, equities are a bad idea, we're pulling out. And we're pulling out 11 billion. I had an article somewhere here, 11 billion of known names. Um, and that's what you know of. That's not in their corporate disguises, their foundations and everything else that haven't been tracked. So it's a little bit, a little bit circumspect. So you're ex getting out of equities, you don't want bonds. Well, how many other choices do you get? Vintage cars, well, those are all things that go up in a liquidity bubble. Fine wines and Persian rugs and vintage cars, the exotica. Do you put all your money in a hedge fund with counterparty risk involving banks, institutions that could be putting money in something you don't know? No, what you actually start thinking about is what will I still own, still weigh the same, still be in immaculate condition regardless the weather, where I store it, etc, etc, and still be the same in a fiat proliferation world where you have central banks across the world printing and devaluing their currency to support their debt markets. So, what do you think they chose? It's starting to look like, much like the central banks, they came to the same conclusion. If not equities, if not bond, what do I buy? And it seems like gold is it. This is a breakout that we're seeing. We feel that uh, that made our third high that we need. And this is actually a great play. We've been talking about it. When will it come? When will it come? We've been watching for this, exactly this with the big pregnant stomach. That is the bloated second impulse, which is the shake out of the volatility of the extremity wick in the church's steeple spike of the first impulse. What is going to move? And we saw this and we got long and you had a small little respectful pullback. Where did it happen? You guessed it at our first interim right there, that little dotted lilac line that you might just about be able to see. You're staring at a 10.5. When last did you get a 10.5 risk reward trade? Well, you won't get it now because you're jumping in and I've waited till this afternoon because I had Bitcoin coverage to do. Yeah, other things are moving too. Crypto coverage, that things which have been moving fast and my turn. Uh, as well or might not might pump higher for an all-time high we will all see but good old faithful started to move and this funny enough is in an environment where we've actually got the dollar creeping up not so much against the euro but creeping up against the hong kong dollar so let's just show you that there's the dixie a little bit down because of uh, the euro being a little bit further but hardly a bloodbath for the dollar in fact um, we're, we're a big fan of Dale Pinkett. Uh, he was on Real Vision recently, but he was saying he's a bear the dollar. In fact, it's one of the rare places where I disagree with him. Solid technical analysis. Of course, we have different opinions, no bads on anybody. But we actually think that this is a beginning of a basing out of the dollar. Uh, don't forget that Dixie is mainly the euro um, and then a little bit of the yen, the pound and the Swiss franc in there. Uh, and that this is a bit of a basing out and that you've actually been in a bit of a rally uh, channel. 
Yes, you might well sell off in a bit, but overall, we feel you didn't make a lower low and you were very violently rejected when you traded below 100. In fact, you went on a tear that took you all the way up to 107. This pullback was substantial, but it did not take you to a new low. So you could be in a series of marginally higher highs, marginally higher lows, maybe, but I think we're going to be grinding. It's not going to be dominant yet. It's not in a breakout to the upside just yet, but I think generally we bias to a tiny bit uh, bullish grinding, but potentially first a breakthrough to the downside there. So it's not a strong view we have on the dollar, but we think it's a recovery on the macro time frame. Um, so it might warrant a little bit more coverage. So this gold move is coming actually on a period when you've actually had some upside on the dollar versus uh, the euro. And as I say, we actually feel, if you look on the bigger time frames, that you may indeed be getting a bit of support here. Don't forget, we called the run of the 110 and you topped out 114 in a blow off move. That's the pullback. It catches a lot of the legacy lows here, support and the last major high before this breakout. That's why we feel it's been very well supported over this period. Look at those three orange boxes and the red box there. That was your previous high. These were tap out highs that occurred and then you went above and what was previously resistance once, twice, and three times and then for the fourth and final time for the upside HVF that we called for you in the currency markets. Yes, yes, yes. Go and check the old videos. Breakout, breakout, rip. Target made 110. Touch the upside of a channel, a channel that you were touching all the way there. Again, three times there, a fourth time there, only it was done first and a fifth time there. Um, and then you're in the bottom side of this channel. We don't necessarily think you're going to go all the way to the low. You can grind and base around in here, in and around the splitter midpoint for a bit before potentially having a down leg or going up. But we think this is a bit of a rounded bottom, a bit of a rounded bottom on a key support level. And the 100 rejection was seminal. You didn't live below that. So on a macro level, this is all in a bull channel, in our opinion, for the dollar. In short, we see interest rates eventually going up, possibly a small pullback first on that in some demand-destroying event or narrative, but I don't think it will go anywhere far as down as it did before because bonds are no longer trusted or loved and everybody wants to sell them. And if interest rates truly went super, super low and bonds re-inflated in value, a whole bunch of pension funds will use any form of liquidity to empty out. Uh, of that, you can be sure. Never mind Chinese. Uh, um, the Russians don't have theirs anymore. It got stolen. How about that for breaking a system? So that that's a little bit on the dollar and we're back uh, with the precious metals and gold. Gold doing just dandy. We have a target of 2,200 plus going for 210 uh, with a bit of overrun on that. Uh, and you've got this excellent move on a Friday, which is often a risk off type day. Yet people are buying gold and going long on the precious metal on a Friday. So there's a point of possible risk uh, and capital preservation is it not interest rates. The framing of interest rates that gold can only go up in a shrinking interest rate environment is deeply unlikely or, uh, and the degree that we'll get cuts on interest rates I think will be far less in spite of a very big crisis that they're no doubt planning for us. We don't do normal crises uh, and normal amounts of disinflation but the debt can't get up valued by the interest rate cuts. No one is going to be a bid buyer. And there's such a glut of debt coming on. Anyway, so we've made our point clear. Gold is looking good. Let's have a little look because people are saying, you haven't updated us on precious metals. Yeah, we're making money somewhere else right now while we're waiting for this, but we haven't forgot about it. We haven't forgot about it. Let's take you to the gold-silver ratio to see if our friend Silva is ever getting its act together. Uh, Gold-silver ratio, here she comes up at 90. So this is the one that I touched uh, base on on Tom. I'm going to take it to a weekly just to reduce this a little bit. You've been batting along inside a channel. And this is why people say you never update, you never update. I update when things happen. I tend to want to update when things are about to happen or in the process of happening. 
um, particularly like when they're about to happen. This we do in the community. They get it first. You want that. You can get in. You could have bought in on the gold trade at and got the 10.5 RRR. Now you're chasing in. It'll be about one is to three. But nonetheless, still looking good for two, two. Uh, you'd need to obviously plan your own risk management and money management. We've discussed the orders and sizing um, inside our community. But generally, in terms of the gold-silver ratio, the real big fireworks come when we finally break this grinding channel of the gold silver ratio. So marginally higher highs uh, ticking along on wicks here for the gold silver ratio, um, which is highlighting like every bull market and every time I say it, and it's a bit the same for Bitcoin, gold runs first. Gold runs first. That's why the gold silver ratio suffers. Silver lags. Silver lags. You get all your Christmases later once gold has already really, really set the tone and is moving. Then you rotate some of your gold. You should be buying gold. Pure gold is our merchant. It's in the links below. They deliver. It's awesome. I have amazing stuff. It's efficient and they'll deliver just about anywhere apart from Nigeria and Australia. Um, so go in there and go and secure your precious metals, gold and silver. But initially you should be dominant gold because gold is the runner. But you say, but that's not exciting. Silver is the cheap one. You rotate into it. You rotate into it. But some of you say, once I bought, I don't want to change. So you can start buying silver, but you might want a smaller percentage. And then you increase your purchases of silver as the gold bull is starting to max out and is slowly starting to bring silver reluctantly along. Because the next phase is when silver properly wakes up, puts the turbo charge on, and goes absolutely mental. And that is the point when we break this, we smash down to 65 in a tick of a switch, uh, and then we have the further downside break for our macro head and shoulders. That'll take you through 30 and down in our long-term macro views that we've shared many times, the possibility, not the guarantee, the possibility of even a single digit gold silver ratio. They only pulled silver out at about eight ounces for every ounce of gold. Um, and it's highly, highly useful. Uh, solar panels are things I'm busy purchasing for complete self-reliance and prepidum on properties. You should too. And silver is there in amidst all of it. It is the most conductive of metals as well. So right now, this isn't the mental part for silver. We can have a look at silver and he's probably not doing too badly, but he's kind of hanging on above the 22, which we've highlighted before. In short, we've got very little new to tell you in this silver support level of 22. Does this the chart where I've highlighted all the 22s? There we go. There's all the 22s highlighting. Now you had a falling wedge right there. Squeezy, squeezy, Japanesey. You broke out, you returned, moved, you came back down, now you're hammering and you're starting to go up, mainly because the truck not the trailer, gold, not silver, is going up. And the bungee cord, you remember that video. I explained it pretty well. What you'll notice is you have a soft floor at the 22 on silver. Now, of course, you'll go, but, 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 it turned resistance there, and it turned resistance there when we had the hyper sell-offs of that. You also had a small period dig there. Apart from that, that's our soft floor at 22. That was quite extreme times. We also had the dollar dominance spell that occurred when you saw it all happening on the Dixie. So it was all about the currencies then, and people weren't thinking too much about the uh, preservation of capital. So silver is where it is. We drop it down to a lower time frame and have a little look. That's a hammer, by the way. There was also a hammer here. That was also a hammer. That's a tiny bit of a hammer. So you are getting a lot of buy-ups. People are prepared to buy silver. There's almost, a, as I say, a floor of 22. But for a week or two there, it's been a long time since you traded below it. That was March of 23. That's literally a year ago since you were trading below. So my expectations is eventually we take out the silver. But to be frank, it's hardly been the most interesting market with the bulk of trade sitting in a channel just like that. And I refer you back to that gold-silver ratio sticking in the channel. We're waiting for things to break. So, and we need a real justification. A falling wedge isn't enough for me to get excited and start running out YouTubes. But I think you will get upside now and potentially approach this red line, especially if gold's gonna put on 10%. Will silver put on 10 or will it put on more? Generally, it puts on more in normal bull market environments, but it may still lag because the big money buys gold. Zucks 
Bezos, with billions, are not building massive warehouses and stacking silver where each ounce is only $20. They would have to be so, so goddamn big. I'm sure they probably have some, but if they were, they're probably going to take gold. Why? Higher value stored for lesser amount. That's right. Okay, so that is the gold-silver ratio. That is your update on gold. Don't forget, pure gold in the links below. My trusted supplier, very consistent, quickly done, fully insured, guaranteed buyback at spot as well. Guaranteed buyback at spot as well for your gold and silver. Thanks for watching. And with the gold chart up one more time, we look at it. Whoop, it's moved a little higher still, 2081. By the way, this is going to be a very eye-opening moment when it gets back above that secondary high and it will be further confirmation that we are in the breakout. For those of you that want to know what that price point is, the high was 2088 and you are already now 2081, just $7 to go. The blow-off high for which you spent almost zero time, um, I'm on a six-hour chart which is quite eccentric of me, but that was all wick by the way. So 2086, which is roughly where we are, uh, just a few dollars ahead of where we are, in terms of candle bodies, is the only height that we've materially spent any moments of a candle during that time. In other words, had a close of the six hour above 2086. You've only done it once before, and that was on this RL2. And it was by a couple of ticks, and on the next candle you were back down. My prediction, that changes. You run 22.10 and sub change, and gold will have picked up 10% plus uh, from these levels over here. Are you getting your 10.5 RRR? Or will you get, let's measure it for you, a still respectable 2.25? I don't know. How, how much is it worth to you? Click the link below, book a call, have a chat with us. Metals are king. We need the God market to move first. Don't worry about the silver. When his time comes, all your Christmases will come. He will go hyper, hyper, hyper. But first the boss moves. And the boss moves slightly slower and steadily. But this is an upside HVF and you're in a breakout. Bye for now and talk to you again soon.